What's up guys? Welcome back to Fancy Goldfish Fanatics. Today we are visiting Scott, an Aranda breeder in Scotland, so make sure you stay tuned to find out more. Hey Fanatics family, welcome back. As always, check out the links in the description. Make sure to check out our sponsor, Star Fisheries, if you're in the UK. And for our USA members, make sure to check out Jimmy Goldfish and use code JimmyGF to get 10% off your order. As I mentioned in this video, we're gonna be visiting Scott, who is based in Scotland. We have done two episodes already on Scott's setup. Um, if you just click up here or here, um, you can click onto that episode. But today we're gonna to be focusing on his fry and his young Aranda. He's got some really small fry and young Aranda, and I thought it'd be really interesting to find out how he breeds them, what parents he chooses, what different foods he feeds them, and how he raises his young to be the absolutely stunning fish that he owns. So what I've done is I've spoken to Scott, he's put an absolutely great video together. I'm not gonna interrupt him. Make sure you listen really carefully because he does have a very strong accent and some of you may need to put the English subtitles on. So Scott, as I said, has put a great video together and I'm gonna put him on the screen now. I'm gonna let him talk you all through it. He's got some different techniques, some unconventional techniques, but his techniques definitely work because he produces loads and loads of stunning fish every year. So I hope you enjoy this episode, and without further ado, I'm gonna let Scott take over. Hello, Fanatics family, and thank you once again for tuning into this channel. Uh, some of you know me already. We've already done a wee fish room tour a wee while ago. Uh, I'm Scott, I only keep Arandas. Uh, today we're going to do exactly the same, we're going to have a wee look round the fish room but uh, with a little bit of a difference. Uh, today we're going to have a look at and talk about breeding goldfish. Have a look at some of the young we've got this season. Uh, we've done quite well this season, only orandas obviously, because that's all we keep. Um, why orandas, eh? I hear a lot of you saying, why orandas? Well, I remember it'd be about 40 years ago I got my first trio of Arandas. Uh, they were from a gentleman called Tommy Sutton. Tommy was a he was a world class fish keeper basically. Tommy had turned, in, turned his garden into a mini fish farm basically. There was ponds everywhere. He had bought his neighbour's gardens, he had oh what a man Tommy was. Anyway, um, I got these three fresh from Tommy. They came up from Birmingham up to Waverley Station in Edinburgh. I went up and I collected them. Oh, it'd be about 11 o'clock at night. Went up and I opened up this bucket. My God, I've never seen three such beautiful fish. There's uh, two males and a female. Unfortunately, I never ever managed to breed those three, which was a shame, but that's another story. Um, right, so what we'll do, that's enough to get introduced to me. What we'll do is we'll have a wee look at some of the fish I've got, um, tell you what I feed them, tell you how I feed them, uh, and hopefully I'll maybe give you one or two wee secrets. Uh, if I can help somebody out, that, that'd be absolutely brilliant, because that's what we're here for, basically. Um, right, so without more ado, we shall have a wee walk into the greenhouse. Right, folks, that's us now in the greenhouse. Um, hopefully that water will stop running in a little minute. I've just switched all the pumps and things off, so hopefully we shall have silence very shortly. Now, I'm going to show you something I learnt not very long ago, believe it or not. Now, I always used to mess about with live brine shrimp. What put me off the live brine shrimp was we having to heat it. Me being Scottish, I'm rather miserable. So I hated wasting heat on maybe just brine shrimp. So, somebody, a person on here actually, told me about something called decapsulated brine shrimp. Now, I thought decapsulated brine shrimp, you still had to hatch it, believe it or not. I thought it was just quicker to hatch, but completely wrong. So, what decapsulated brine shrimp is, is it's actually 
just what it says on the packet. It is barem shrimp that has been decapsulated. So these are actually all little barem shrimps. So what we do is a couple of spoonfuls into our trusted little egg cup. A couple of little spoonfuls in there. Lid back on because it's quite expensive that stuff. And we get our syringe and we add just a syringe full of water basically. So there we go. And you just watch at the end because it gives you a wee poof. You don't want the brain shrimp going everywhere. Right, <clears throat> so what we do is we just give that a little stir round and leave that for maybe five minutes and we shall come back to that in five minutes time. A few moments later. Right people, that is our brine shrimp now well and truly soaked up. So what we'll do is we get the syringe and we suck up as much of that shrimp as we can. Sometimes it takes a couple of goes just to get more shrimp into it. Let all the all the shrimp drop down and you squirt the water back in. We'll soak up again. So here we have it. This is our syringe loaded with prime shrimp. You see all the prime shrimp down at the bottom there? And what we will now do is we pop that in the water, held in place with a little bit of glass, and there, you see, what actually happens is the shrimp, the, the shrimp very slowly comes out the syringe, a bit like an egg timer, this is really hard to show you this. But believe me, it does just slowly dissipate through the water there. These fish are actually too old to be getting brine shrimp now, truth be known. But uh, try telling them that. Um, the one thing I would say about this way of breeding brine shrimp is, unfortunately, it doesn't move, so it's no got the same enticement for fish. Um, so basically, once all that's stopped coming out the syringe for very young fish they'll no touch it because it's lying on the bottom obviously it's not moving uh, that's the only drawback with that the way you get round that uh, is a bit gentle aeration just aerate it up again so that it moves about again and then your little fish can start chasing it again so here we are again folks back at the feeding station Three little spoonfuls doesn't matter how much you're going to give, you'll know yourself how much your fish actually eat. Now those are, uh, those are viscous pellets. Basically, as long as it's a high protein pellet, because you want to put protein into the fish basically, to help them growth. Now, we get a screwdriver, but we get the end of the screwdriver, and we pretend we're an old fashioned chemist with a mortar and pestle. And we grind that in. We then get our trusted syringe. We add water. And we give it a mix around. Now, you'll get to know how much water to add, etc, etc. Um, and we will come back to that in a couple of minutes and I'll show you how it's made into a paste. One eternity later. So there you go. Five or so minutes later and it has turned into a big pasty lump. And that will go straight into the water and that the fish won't even look at. <laughs> <laughs> Normally they're straight for that, um, they're obviously had enough at the moment. Um, but that, they just peck away at that all day, or for as long as it lasts anyway. Believe me, they do eat that, they love it. Right, just about to go and have a look at the um, adult fish. And actually, I just remembered, the person that 
told me about the decapsulated brine shrimp was actually Jimmy Goldfish from here, so a big shout out to Jimmy Goldfish. Thank you very much, mate. Look, there's these little babies that have almost eaten all that stuff we put in previously. This was Dad. Now, Dad, Dad's a mat fish. He doesn't live in there, by the way. <laughs> um, now, a mat fish, people don't usually breed mat fish because they're they're quite soft. Um, believe me, this chap is not soft. He's right been right through this winter. He was bred by myself. His mum and dad were both calicos, um, but he's a hardy little fish. He's only one year now. Nice little fish. Uh, just needs his hood to start to develop and he'll be ideal. So moving on, we have mum. Mum is only about a year old too and she has lost quite a few scales down there I notice and that has just been through the handling today unfortunately but she'll be fine because the water's always clean um, Now mum is, as I said she's only, she's a young fish as well um, I read Aranda and hopefully her food will come as well My Arandas don't seem to get hoods for Till they're two anyway so anyway, that is the parents. We also stuck in another red uh, male, just because I always like to work with uh, two males and a female. So, our results, allegedly, from crossing this mat to this metallic, gives you 100% calico fish. We shall have a look at the results very, very shortly. But that is the parents. Now, <clears throat> before we actually go in to have a look at these other fish, what I'm going to do is going to try and point out how these fish are supposed to be sorted. Now, if you see that fish there, he came out the same spawning, but he's got a single tail. You always get single tails. I didn't get many this time, but you always get them. Now, moving on to this one here, if you have a look at that closely, you'll notice that he is tri-tailed, but there's no split in the middle of that tail. So, he's no good. Again, that's another single tail. Now, they were sorted out at three weeks old, thrown into one of the tubs, well the single tails were, uh, but they have survived. So, they will just have to find new homes now because they're too big for me to anything nasty with. The tri-tails I keep anyway because there's always somebody looking for just a basically a pet quality fish and there's nothing wrong with those fish. So we'll move along to the way the fish is supposed to look. Here we are. There. If you have a look at the tail on that, those two, both split right along the middle, I hope. Right, these are my newest additions. These are red arandas, hopefully. <laughs> and they are, no other. Both parents were reds. Um, they will be around 10 days old now, I think, at the most. Um, their growth rate's not very great at the moment, actually. Uh, but I'm really starting to think that I have to outcross my reds. Uh, I think it's just been too long. But we'll wait and see how they get on. Um, their food at the moment, what you see floating about there, which is almost bigger than the fish, <laughs> is Daphnia. Now, I always like Daphnia in a fry tank because, well, number one, it keeps the water fresh, it purifies the water. Um, they're miniature filters, basically. Uh, and number two, the Daphnia will always breed in that water and give the fish food, basically. As well, obviously as well as what I add additionally. 
Um, there you are, that's the latest additions. The smallest in the family at the moment. So I hope you enjoyed that video. I thought it was really cool how Scott had some very unique techniques, I suppose you could say. I hope maybe you guys learned something from the video. And if you've got any questions for Scott, feel free to drop a comment down below and I'm sure he will come along and answer those for you. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully we'll get many more tank tour episodes on. If you want your tank featured on the channel, make sure to check out the link in the description and send me an email and we can work out a video for you. I hope you've all enjoyed this video as always remember to keep those water changes up and happy fish keeping.